How resourceful is a good technical video? Well, very bright. That's not what we are saying. That's what a lot of our customers are saying. That's what a lot of people we meet at random events are saying. And that's why, by popular demand, we have got back our technical video series. It's called the How to Open Source Series. This is a new series with the same old concept in a new way. So basically, you will see a lot of technical content on either Postgres, Docker, Nginx, Elastic, and more. So stay tuned and watch out for how Ajit is going to solve a how to problem using Elastic Stack. Welcome, friends. My name is Ajit Gadke, and I work with Ashtik as a senior consultant. Today, I'm going to show you how to aggregate the logs using ELK cluster or ELK stack and how to build a sample visualization and dashboard using Kibana. On my screen, you can see I am using a uh, two VM. The VM number one is ELK Demo 1 and the VM number two is ELK Demo 2. On ELK Demo 1 VM, I have uh, Elasticsearch uh, node 1 where I install Elasticsearch. I have a Logstash install and I have a Kibana. On my VM number two, I have Elasticsearch node two, which is a part of the cluster of ELK uh, Elasticsearch node one. I also have a file bit from where I am ingesting, uh, I'm uh, sourcing the logs. And also I have a source file, which is I'm going to use here, Nginx logs under the installer folder. So with this information, I'm going to show you the demo on how you can ingest the file with log. With the demo, I'm going to tell you about few small tips which might be helpful to you while you ingesting logs. Let's uh, go on uh, my uh, Linux screen. So on the screen, my left hand side of tab is uh, ELK demo 1 and my right hand side of tab is my ELK demo 2. Okay. Let me give you the information about my file bit which I installed. So this is my file bit configuration. If you look at this, I am ingesting the log from installer access star.log. So all the logs which is ending with the log as extension under the installer slash access folder. I'm ingesting this log into the Elastic search and then filter this log uh, using a log stash configuration file. With this, my tip number one is that if you have a multiple types of log, like for example, let's say you have an access log, you have an error log, you can use a fill and then log type and use this log type in your uh, log stash filter. For example, if you have a for access log, you have a different filter, for error log, you have different filters. You can use this using the if then else condition. I'm going to show you the example in my this session. Let me show you my installer log as well. What is my source? So I'm just showing you my Nginx logs. This is my sample nginx log. If you look at the screen on, uh, if you look at the screen, for example, let's say this is a one log line in this log, starting with the remote IP address from where my users are accessing the my website. This is a uh, timestamp when they are accessing method. This is a complete message, full message line, but it start with the method, get method put method, different kind of methods are there. Web page which they are accessing, HTTP, the response code, bytes, and then user agent information. Like from which uh, device they are accessing, from which browser they are accessing, which OS they are accessing, etc. Right? So I like to, uh, this is a very nice information if I get analyzed this. But I like to uh, break this information, this especially this message information into the smaller field so that I can use this uh, in a meaningful manner and then get the real-time analysis. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going on my 
DLK demo one server where I already have a Logstash installed. In my Logstash in, uh, install base, I already created nginx access filters uh, using a group pattern. Let me show you that. This is my logstash configuration file, uh, which I written for the nginx logs. If you look at this, the first part of the this file is uh, input section, which is uh, which is nothing but take the input from the bits on the port 5044 from all the hosts, whether it is file bit, metric bit, from all the hosts. So if you like to receive the logs only from the particular host, you can mention the IP address of that. After this, there is a filter section. In the filter section, I have filtered the logs, especially the message field, into the smaller fields, which is a meaningful ma manner, and then enhance this log. So, if you look at, if you observe this, I have mentioned like tagging in your file bit. That tagging I have reflected in this configuration. For example, if my tagging is log type, is access log, which I mentioned in my file bit configuration. I'm just taking this. But if fill log type is access, then use this group pattern for the filtration. This is a message uh, filter which I am filtering in a smaller field. Once the fields are break down into a smaller meaningful field, I don't need the message, whole complete message, right? So I'm removing the message as a field. Otherwise, a uh, message field along with the smaller breakdown field of the message will come. The reason behind is that because I already break down this message field, I do not need this. The reason behind is that uh, if I contain the message field in the same document, it might be uh, take space on my index and slower down the performance. This might be my tip number two. So the, those fields which you don't need from the source, try to remove those fields. Then I have enhanced some more uh, parameters in the field like I am just uh, adding the new field as a read timestamp so where the message are getting read as a timestamp in the source then I am enhancing my date like ddmmyy format and then remove the older time I have user agent which is a plugin or kind of module in Logstash which read the user agent information from the message and convert it into the meaningful uh, fields I'm also using a geo IP. Geo IP basically take the remote IP and then convert it into the geo IP geo point, which is the longitude and latitude. So I'm going to show you the example on this, how you can map the longitude and latitude as a location, uh, as a geo point type and create the, some meaningful maps on the Kibana, right? So while you're doing the geo IP, uh, make sure that uh, your location field is also typed as a geo underscore point. That's very important. The reason behind is that uh, many times uh, Logstash take basically Elasticsearch builds your index dynamically. So if you don't specify index mapping, then Elasticsearch create the dynamic index mapping. While it's doing the dynamic index mapping, it doesn't convert the location into the geo point keep as a text so you need to convert this geo point so that uh, you can get a geo point and map and put this in the map field so I have already done that I can show you here is my mapping of my index and if you look at this geo underscore point see location is geo underscore which I already mapped type as a geo point right make sure that you already create the mapping of your index and make, mention that location as a geo point else it will come as a text and you cannot map this fill on your kibana to, to make the mapping kind of uh, visualization and then i'm giving this output the another one trick is that uh, if somehow you get some uh, different fill or weird fill or some extra fill and because of that fill your group parser are get failed it will stop but I do not want to stop my pipeline instead of that the message which is uh, have extra fill or some weird fill I want to remove that message while I'm ingesting the data for that I have given another one filtered over here if group parser failure is happen attack 
to stop that message i do not want that extra message right so you can add this is very helpful and then i'm giving the output uh, to the elastic search or the injection i've given my host name of elastic the another tip is that if you are testing this first time or second time while you are doing testing make sure that you give the debugging parameter like standard output is a ruby debug so that it will help you to debug your message while in the production you can disable that but while you're doing the testing make sure that it is ruby debug so that you can see how the messages are going uh, into the elastic on your screen right? you can type out that in a, some text file as well i'm just going to run this so while you are doing testing make sure that you do not do any syntactical errors and uh, how to do the testing uh, for your configuration file is that give hyphen t hyphen s for the file which you have created configuration file and hyphen t is for just for the testing it will not run uh, your configuration file but it will just test it will check the syntactical problem right so I'll just run this one more thing is that i'm running this as a single line uh, single file but if you have multiple configuration file and you want to like to run this in a single pipeline then you can use the system ctl command as well or you like to run the multiple configuration file as a different pipeline then you can use a pipeline.yml into the different pi uh, pipe so that create a multiple index that topic i will take in the uh, next session but today i'm going to run single pipeline the single file configuration file so my log slash configuration is okay configuration okay now i'm going to run this instead of hyphen t i'm just going to run will give some kind of warning but just these are the results. just warning just ignore that okay so now if you look at this the agent is started successfully on log search default port 9600 right now I still not enable my file bit that's what it is not data is not coming so I'm checking some CTL status file bit right still running I wanted to give another one tip is that while you are not on a production and you are doing testing we like to test the same file or same set of data repeatedly right and while doing that the next uh, you, you like to remove the registry the reason behind is that file bit keep a track of your data while uh, last time it, it, it ran right so you need to remove the registry from the file bit so that you can test repeatedly that the same set of data so that file bit tracking of this registry is uh, into the var slash lib slash file bit and I need to remove this file registry right before that I forget uh, before that you have to stop the file bit first right and then remove the registry so that is a better way otherwise file bit is still running tracking the data and while you are uh, remove the registry it might track the older uh, older endpoint so stop the file bit and then remove the registry and then i'm going to start the file bit let's check the status the file bit is started successfully now let's check on my log stash so yeah, so if you look at this, my log stash file is started. It uh, start ingesting the logs. You can see on screen that's what I have given a debug. That's what my uh, last is. So it keep running. I'll show you on my Kibana screen how the data is already get, uh, uh, ingested. So if you get this, uh, my index is already forty-eight thousand nine hundred and eighty records are only there from this bit which i'm ingesting and if you look at any one of the document you can come to know that my message field is break down into the smaller field and meaningful field there is no message field 
the longer fill and it is break uh, broken down into the smaller fill the smaller fill like i have taken a user agent information which giving the user name if there is a user agent there is a url response port remote ip and then this remote ip I have converted into the geo point the geo point is like region region name region code postal code location longitude latitude you can see the geo point dot location is a hash so geo uh, geo point as a type right uh, these are the information you can easily get and this is a really meaningful information for me the rest of the information like cloud provider cloud provider cloud region this is basically the elastic common schema information it might be useful for you as well while you are doing analysis so i already done the, uh, i already broken the my message field into a smaller field and this is really nice information for me to do the analysis of my web traffic so i already built some kind uh, some kind of dashboard using this information i will show that So this is a nice dashboard which I built using a uh, six uh, visualization. So one of the visualization is um, location from where uh, my users are accessing my web server. So I have plot my geo point which I uh, geo point location. So the traffic is somewhere coming from Central Europe and then somewhere India, Singapore region, and North America region. You can go back and see a more dashboard, a more visualization. So there is the information about the devices from where the users are accessing my website. Most of the devices are other. Other is nothing but uh, bots. And then there is some more uh, devices like iPhone, Samsung from where my users are accessing my data. The browser and the OS information, the outer ring is uh, uh, the OS information, sorry, the browser information and the inner ring is my OS information from where the users are accessing the uh, website. Response code mostly is a green, which is a 200 successful, but there is a 304, there is a, some 404 as well. This is a histogram uh, number of hits on my website per hour basis, and this is uh, this is a visualization for which web page are mostly hit from my users and this is the user uh, remote IP and their count. So this kind of nice dashboard you can build using the fields which are broken down into a smaller field and you can get the real time analytics uh, from your web server logs. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this video is informative to you and help you to configure your log aggregation use case. We will continue similar kind of video under the how to uh, series on Ashtick YouTube channel. So keep watching our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.